the whole experience with you and ACX from the moment I thought, right, okay, I want to make an audio book. How do I go about this? And right through to the finished product with you. I didn't get that many um, auditions. I think I've got about 11, something uh-huh. like that. Yeah. Um, and I was about to go with another chap who was very, very good, very good. And then yours came in. And I started, <laughs> my wife had gone to bed and I hadn't, I hadn't seen yours. I said, look, 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 listen, listen, you've got, to, you've got to listen to this, you've got to listen to this. So, this is where you've been hiding. Jeez, I blurted, and probably an octave higher than normal. Jacko had turned up unexpectedly. How'd you do that, I said, as I purposefully deepened my tone. Do what? Sneak up on you? Easy, he smirked. You okay, then? I wasn't sure why he was here. Yep, just thought I'd bring you one of these. He handed me a can of Brewdog, our favourite hangover in a can. Nine percent of Britain's finest. Ta, maybe in a while. I've really got to finish here before it gets too hot. I'm melting already. I'll give you a hand. I've got nothing better to do. Good to finally meet you. Um, where are you? Um, just south of Cambridge. Um, sort of uh, on the borders of North Essex and Cambridgeshire. Right. Uh, there's a little, little, little village outside Cambridge. So near Saffron Walden. So okay, I, I know well, I'm not... Million miles from where you are, actually. Yes, so. I'm in Hitchin in Hertfordshire. Yeah, yes. yeah, um, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, the trains we catch into London, a lot of them come from Cambridge. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I was up there a couple of weeks ago. To no, it was more like a couple of months ago. Uh, right. To take my. All, all I remember was I I parked, I parked in uh, in a street in Cambridge, and it was a pay and display. And I put whatever change I had in my pocket and I grabbed the ticket out of the machine and went to display it in the car. And I'd bought like five minutes of parking for about what I think was like a fiver or something. It was just outrageous. That sounds about right for Cambridge. <laughs> it's, not, it's yeah. not a place I go very often now. I mean, I was born I was born sort of in the um, northern suburbs of Cambridge, sort of one of the council estates right. in Cambridge. And um, I think... For your American viewers, the projects, as they call it, <laughs> and um, uh, which is, um, I mean, it's, it's an okay, it's a nice area. It's great growing up there in the seventies, but I don't. I only go into Cambridge to visit my mother now. She's the only link I've got to Cambridge now. So I would say growing like, up in the in, in the rough area of Cambridge isn't as rough as the rough area of some other places you could have grown up, you know? No, uh, in my uh, professional life, I've been to some very rough areas, particularly uh, I was involved with the um, the Docklands Regeneration. Okay. Back in the 1980s, and that, some of that was rough. <laughs> yeah. Was, I mean, it's, it, they were lovely people, but these were the, um, the second, well, one generation away from the Dockers from the Second World War. Yeah, and um, yeah. you know that was hard. That was a hard place. So I've seen a few places. So I'm, I'm not moaning about where I grew up. It was it was a lovely place to grow up, and I've got a lot of friends still who have moved away, obviously, and yeah. um, as you do. And uh, yeah. we often reminisce about growing up on on the estate in in Cambridge. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you're a surveyor in the construction industry. Is that uh, how you got yeah. to be doing work work in in the uh, in the Docklands? It, it was, yeah. I, I, um, I, yeah, it's, I, I've always been involved in it. But I started off in engineering, actually, but I, I only did that for a couple of years. And then by the time I was about 18, I think, I got into uh, surveying the small firm north of Cambridge and um, just carried on. And by the time I was 25, I was self employed and have been ever since. Um, I had a spell for three and a half years back at the turn of the century, you know, 2000, 2003, with what the biggest house builder at the time as their chief estimator. But um, I, was, I wasn't I was employed by them. I was a, a directly employed consultant, effectively. So I was still self-employed. So, right. Uh, so quite a wide been... range of things that's taken you to, uh, yeah. things to do and, and, uh, and seeing yeah. a lot of the country. Has that yeah. helped influence your writing then? Um, I'm not sure, really. Um, it, 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 yeah, in the people you meet, the people you meet and the experiences you have. I mean, some of the stories I, um, I, I could tell about 
working in Docklands would make your hair turn. It, well, not mine, obviously, but it would yours. Um, it's, it, you know, they, they were, as I said, they were proper characters. And these were people who who grew up amongst some of the uh, the gangs in London in the 60s. You know, they, they were still they were talking about all of that back in the early 1980s. And um, so, yeah, I met a few good people there. Um, I think most of my influences with my writing come from basically where I grew up. And I mean, I've always I grew up in Cambridge, um, but we were on the north part of the city, which at that time wasn't built up at all. I was literally five minute walk from my door to the countryside. Uh, we had a, uh, a death pit on the doorstep. Um, we, had, we from the plague period. Uh, we had. For, for anyone who up, doesn't who doesn't know what that is, can you just explain what a death you know, pit a death is. It was where um, I mean, you got places in London like um, Blackheath, for example, in London. It's called that because it was a, a pit where people from the who died from the Black Death were buried in a mass grave. Um, and we had one of these on the outskirts, the northern part of Cambridge, because they wouldn't have buried them in the city centre because that was obviously university land going yeah. back. Uh, well, it, it wasn't, it, it, it was early university land then. Um, so we talked about them sort of the mid 17th century, the 1640s, 50s, 60s, that sort of period. Um, but we had one of these on the north of Cambridge, uh, well, it's still there. Um, we also had a, a large pit where they buried um, a lot of animals that died of, um, I think it was mainly rabbits, wasn't it? Mixed mitosis and that type of thing. Um, right. They buried a lot of rabbits from East... I don't know why they brought them from East Anglia and buried them there. Why they, I don't know. I guess that's why they, they dump nuclear waste in the North Sea or whatever they do with it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. That's why Southfield uh, is in Cumbria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, we had a Roman villa was discovered uh, in a housing development near where literally probably 300 yards from where I lived. Um, that place is now known as the Roman Courts in Cambridge. They're all named after, but they've all got Roman names. Um, so I grew up around that sort of thing. And I grew up in uh, here. Don't go there. Don't go there. As we all do as children. But yeah, places there... Um, I mean, the, the science park in North Cambridge is a very famous place if, if you are in that sort of field, I guess. But it's um, none of that existed. It was an old um, World War II bomb storage site. So we've got these big silos in the ground and we used to go around collecting salamanders and things like that, you know, which are lizards. Um, uh, but that was all redeveloped when I was sort of growing up uh, into a, a world-renowned science park. And... Um, then there was the A14, the motorway link um, yeah. for that part of the country, was built as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a complete, as it is for all of us, you go back to where you grew up, it's nothing like what it was when you grew up. Um, but, but it certainly is the case there. It isn't like anything But it's like interesting it. you talk about, you know, ancient history and a bit of archaeology. Yeah. There's nods to that in the pit, isn't there? I mean, Almost big time. Yeah. So Most there's some kind of influence in there that's, that, that, that you know, it's it's been bubbling away and, and it's come oh, to the surface when you've written yeah. the pit. Yeah, definitely, Graham. I mean, all the other all the other short stories that I've written already, which, I mean, you'll get to see over, over the period of the next few months, but the, uh, the pit was a standalone story, so it's not part of a series at all. But that was, it was, it was quite influenced by... Um, some of the things that I've read and seen. Um, I mean, Grimes Graves in Norfolk. I don't know if you know of Grimes Graves. It was a Neolithic um, mine. Uh, well, a series of mines. So, so there were, there were shafts dug into the ground by Stone Age miners, and they mined flint because the flint in mm -hmm. Norfolk was traded throughout Europe right. uh, because it was such a good quality. And they found flint, which is believed whilst i don't think it can be specifically um dated or um 
tested to have come from a particular area it's because of the style of the the napping of the flint it's shown that flint that's been found in denmark and northern france has come from norfolk so they were trading this flint sort of three and a half thousand years ago uh so grimes graves looks like a little bomb site actually if you look at it from the air um mm -hmm. Fascinating place. You can go down one of the pits, actually. You can go into one of them. Um, and um, so that had a sort of an influence on me, that sort of thing, growing up with that. And then there's the Norfolk coast, which we spent a lot of time there as children um, on holidays and days out. Um, that's had an influence on me. For well, the that's setting. why you've, you've, set, you've set the book there in, in yeah, East Anglia. Yeah. Yeah. All of my books are set in East Anglia. They're all yeah. set either in Norfolk, Suffolk, North Essex or the um, Cambridgeshire Fens, Cambridgeshire Lincolnshire Fens, they're all set in those areas uh, because that's where I, that's the area I know. Um, uh, I do like to go out and research a little bit, uh, it takes me out for a day every now and then, but I don't need to do a lot of it because I know the areas anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, particularly Suffolk, I know Suffolk quite well. Um, yeah. Well, we don't yeah. want to give away too much about the book, but we can say that it, it's set. Much. It's set in East Anglia. It's about. Yeah. It's set in the present day. It's about yeah. a bloke who is a, a landscaper, gardener type guy, yeah. and he makes a discovery. Well, him and his friend, who, his friend who is more of a history, is actually studying history, isn't he? So, yeah. so let's let's talk about the characters. Let's talk about Tim. Then is he based on you? Uh, I think there's a fair bit of me in there, actually. Yeah. I think there is. I think there is. Um, and uh, But there's also a couple of other people that I know. Um, you know, there's bits of everybody in there. Um, uh, but there is, there, is, there is quite a bit of me in there. I'm, um, I'm sure that people who haven't read it yet will read it someday and they'll say, yeah, I can see parts of you in there. <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, you work, you've worked for yourself a lot and, you know, he works yeah. for himself and it's like month to month and he's making sure he gets the jobs and he wants to get the big jobs with like the council because, you know, yeah. you don't have to chase them for money usually if you get a council <laughs> job or, or or a big job. It's If you're working yeah. for yourself, that's the work to get. And, it, and he, uh, he gets a bit of work and he thinks it'll lead on to something else and then he yeah. makes this... He makes this discovery and it all gets well, a bit spooky. It, it's described as a folk horror ghost story. But yeah, uh, is um, it, yeah just, yeah, just take I us mean, through that, through the vibe of I, it all. Well, um, I, I, I've been writing for, I've been writing for, for, for a few years now. Um, it's something I wanted to do, um, but it, I, I never really quite knew where I fitted, which genre. I knew, I knew it wasn't horror as in... Um, like James Herbert type horror. It wasn't that type of horror. Um, but it, it it certainly wasn't just a straightforward mystery or, or a suspense story either. There was there were elements of ghostliness within all of my stories, within all, all of them. Everything I write, is all, they're all very similar like in that respect. Um, so it wasn't until I came across a, a, an article a couple of years ago uh, with, about this resurgence of the folk horror subgenre yeah. and uh, i thought you know what i think i'd probably whilst it's like everything isn't it you know you, you can ask 10 people the same question you get 10 different answers so with folk horror it's the same thing you'll ask 10 people who are involved with writing painting recording songs in that genre and they'll all give you a different answer as to f what it means to them and um but i sort of tried to steer along the middle line with it i mean t for me it's it's essentially a, a feeling of isolation whether it's an individual or a group of people or community um isolated yeah. you think about norfolk where norfolk is it's quite isolated yeah uh, you don't pass through norfolk to get anywhere you've got to go there um <laughs> and uh it's um generally um rural communities or the 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 story is set in in a rural in a rural setting whether it's farming or on the land or on the on the the seafront things like that um and there's an element of ritual or um occult involved yeah. with it which, yeah. which this sort of rears its head in the pit yeah and um, um is on 
uh, I think on the f- on the front of the book, my my it says uh, this this folk horror style ghost story has it all history or, or mystery, suspense, and history, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and they're the things I try to sort of entwine within it. So there's a certain amount of mystery in there. You don't want to give the story away at the beginning. So there's a mystery in there. There's some suspense in there as well. And there's the historical element because the history is all, all has been and always has always been my first love i've um i've always enjoyed reading and studying history and um so i wanted to bring and i'm, I'm a great advocate in for english history as well um and particularly for east anglian history um i tried to sign i tried to sign an official form recently where they asked for your nationality and i put east anglian <laughs> <laughs> No, it did get sent back. It did. <laughs> it did get sent back, yeah. yeah. But that's just me being bloody-minded, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but so was, I love I, all I thought I thought it was clever how you made... Because it's set in a, in a very, very small rural community, a tight-knit community. But you mm. made Tim an outsider, which when you, you know, as you read it, the reader naturally is an outsider and is learning about this. He was explaining it to outsiders. If you'd made him a total local, I think he would have been a bit too in to bring everybody in, to bring the reader in. And I thought that was very, very smart. I mean, he li- he's lived there a long time and, and it, that's his home. So he's not he's not an outsider, like he's, he's just, you know, like a cowboy that's wandered into town kind of thing. He, he, he's part of the community, but because he wasn't born there, he's explaining mm. it to people for, he's explaining it for outsiders when he explains it. And I thought that was very, very clever to bring the reader in. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I um well I, I I again that's probably a little bit of me coming out there because I've lived I was born and raised in Cambridge. Um and I moved to a village I only lived six miles from where I was born. Um but it could have been the other side of the world because we've lived here for 35 36 years i think 35 years and um it's only since what well, i don't know maybe since the pandemic i guess that i've actually felt part of the village because we got involved with some stuff that was going on locally with the pandemic as a lot of people did you know you try to help out do stuff and um it was only then that i felt in my heart fully involved with the village because there are families still living locally whose names are on the local war memorial you know their families yeah are on yeah the war memorial but fordham doesn't appear on the war memorial anywhere uh, but they you know it's, it, it it and you, you don't want to buy yourself into a, into a, a community but at the same time you have to do something i think if you're from the outside you have to do something to be accepted and yeah. um so i felt for many years that whilst we got on with people fine get on with people fine but um, there's always that something there, you know, because your dad didn't know so-and-so's dad. And, uh, you know, or um, how long have you been drinking in this pub? Only 20 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't be really cool. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. And yeah, it's so funny it's... How, how people will use older references. You know, I've only lived in Hitchin for about, I think it's about seven years now. Right. And... Um, I, I bought a flat here and it's where the old art college used to be. And I've no, I have no memory at all of an art college being where these, this block of flats That's is good. yet. But I found myself explaining, they go, where do you live? And I go, Oh, do you know where the art college used to be? And they go, yeah. And I have no idea what I'm on about, but yeah, you, you, you get into that. That's how it's, that's how this area is explained locally. Yeah. So that's how you're going to have to explain it. Yeah. 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 And I, I think, wanna, I think we, sorry. Yep. So I was going to say, I think it was important as well within the, the story that I, I used, I used Jacko, who's uh, Tim's sidekick, yeah, as the way for for Tim to explain through the book to yes. the outside reader what was actually going on because I think you know Jacko. I think you realised quite early that Jacko's got some idea of yep. perhaps what is happening. Uh, because he's a true born local as i put and, it and he's um, and he's a real history um oh yeah well. he's into all yeah. that type of thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no that is great so so when you were a kid and you were reading stuff what were you reading 
What, what um, influenced you that, that's come out in the pit? Well, mainly, I mean, my favourite author um, growing up was James Herbert, um, without a doubt. Um, I used to, you know, I read all of his books several times. Still, yeah. still, you can't actually see, but they're, yeah, they're that's that side underneath the television. There's a whole back <laughs> of them there, at the back there, yeah. but they're all the original ones from back in the eighties as well. So I, I've, I've, I don't know if I've read one for a few years, but I did read them all. James Herbert definitely. Um, sacrilegious, I, I guess, but I was never really into Stephen King. Um, you weren't? Okay. No, no, um, um, no. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed reading all of the Jonathan Gash novels. Now, Jonathan Gash was the man that wrote the stories that the Lovejoy series was then based on. With, okay, um, Jane right. Apparently. So, again, we've got that East Anglian thing, but he's going around solving very, very lightweight mysteries throughout East Anglia in the antiques trade. Yeah. Um, so I think um, I, enjoy, I enjoy those because of the setting. And then uh, just the normal things that you pick up from your, what your dad reads, like um, Frederick Forsyth and Jack Higgins, that type of thing. I like war, war books and war movies and spy novels. That and type when, of you, thing. when you started writing The Pit... Did you know where it was going? Did you know? Because uh, there's a reveal. There's a reveal near the end of it, when yeah. you go, "Bloody hell, is that what was going on? Holy crap!" I mean, did you know that was where that was going, or did did that come as you went? I think I did. Yeah. I mean, I'm. Uh, I've, watched, I've watched a few of your your um, uh, interviews with other people, and um, I'm I'm most definitely a planner. I, right. I plan. Right, I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't be like I've, I've, I've got sixteen series planned of four to six books in each series, and I've got now I've got twelve of those planned out. So I know what I'm going to be writing for the next few years. That doesn't mean that rigidly. I mean, I will change if I have to. And there were a couple of changes halfway through the pit. Yeah, uh, there were a couple of things, not major, not major. I mean, but you have for me, I had to have a plan to know. When I was going off course, how to get it back on, and because I I did know the ending before I started writing, so right, um, yeah. I and I guess with I... it being such a short book, relatively, I mean, for an audio yeah. book, for me it, it was two hours, which for me is is yeah. what is on the shorter end of the stuff I've done. You would have to have it planning. You'd have to have that plan because you just haven't got the time to to, to get. You've got to keep the the narrative going. Because right. you've only got this short time to get it in and pay it off. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, that in itself was was um, uh, quite difficult because um, you have only got that. I mean, I think the pit is 17 and a half thousand words. Something like, I know you do it in time, but... Yeah, so it's about 1.7 hours. It's about it's about 10,000 yeah. words per, 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 hour, um, per hour. narrated hour, yeah. yeah so yeah. the... Um, the it is. Um, it, it was. A, it was. A, it was a hard thing to do because it was only the third story that I'd ever written. Uh, the other two, I, I, they, I've kept bits of them, but they're they're, they're basically in the bin. <laughs> but the the pit was um, really the third story I'd ever written, and only the first one that I'd ever gone through the publishing route with. Uh, right. The other two say hey, they'll never see the light of day. Um, <laughs> But, <laughs> so um, is this like is this like a later life thing now that you're going to be an author like this oh, is absolutely. a this is yeah. it now this is this, this is, is yeah, an epiphany I'm, this is i'm yeah. virtually semi-retired now um yeah i turned 60 last month and um that's it now i just want to spend the rest of got grandchildren coming along and uh i want to spend the time i i've, I've, I've I've, I've never wanted to conquer the world, Graham. I just wanted a nice little business that was just me. Um, and that's how it's been. That's how it's been for like since I was 25. And I've, I've been very, very fortunate in that I was able to earn a reasonable living out of the something I really enjoyed doing. Yeah. Um, surveying side of things. And, um, uh, and I think I'm very fortunate in that I'm able now to put together something um that i know i'm going to get a lot of enjoyment out of the business side of it drives me around the, the bend um you know a a a c x i mean although i've got to say the, the whole experience with you 
and ACX from the moment I thought, right, okay, I want to make an audio book. How do I go about this? And right through to the finished product with you. I didn't get that many um, auditions. I think I got about 11, something uh -huh. like that. Yeah. Um, and I was about to go with another chap who was very, very good, very good. And then yours came in. And I started, <laughs> my wife had gone to bed and I hadn't, I hadn't seen yours. I said, look, 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 listen, listen, you've got, you got to listen to this, you've got to listen to this. I said, you've got to listen to this. This guy's really, really good. And um, I think it's, again, I've heard other people say it's the inflection that you put on some of the words. And I love the way, I'm not, I'm not anal about the whole thing. I know it's my book, it's my baby, etc. cetera. But um, I love the way that you, interpreted some of the stuff and missed some of my words out added in a couple of not important words if they, if they were important we'd have we'd have sorted that out you know oh i'm up for you if you want to change anything as we go yeah. i always because i always send it in sections and and let the yeah. author go no can you change that and you know sometimes yeah. they change typos and as long as it's not too many that's fine oh, yeah you just, yeah i you think just it, got it. It, was, it was it was it wasn't that it, it was the way that you came across with some of the um as I say, your inflections and your your interpretation of stuff, and the and the 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 accents that you gave, or the accent that you gave to, I think was spot on. Lovely, I, I really enjoyed that listening to him, because again, I've heard people say that's not how it was up here. That's not how I was hearing yeah, that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. You now. hear it. Somebody asks you, think, do you know, is that really? Is that? Did I really write that? Did I really write that? <laughs> And um, and I enjoyed listening. I really enjoyed listening to it. And a couple of people have listened to to it as well. I know I've not done any marketing with it yet. Um, yeah. I will do. I will yeah. do. Um, but it's um, no, it's been a great experience. I must admit. Oh, I'm the, glad you uh, enjoyed because it it, it's a really, really yeah. well written book. Which you know the yeah. the the, the well written ones are easier to perform i don't know if you'd call this performance but um because i get right into them i get right into the character and i try and you know give it as much as i can what's he thinking and all that and um when they're really really well written when the then the character literally comes off the page it's easier if the if the if you've got an idea of the character and then the way it's written isn't quite how i start to think the character would speak it's much harder to to do but yours it felt like yeah this is exactly what i get this guy i get this fella he's you know he's not from around there he's lived there for a while he's he's a contractor he's he's getting by and he's got this job and he wants to do the right thing and he doesn't want to stand on any toes and upset you know but then there's this thing going on you know so it was really really good to get into it was so much fun to do and we did it quite quickly too it was only like a couple of weeks wasn't it we did the whole thing absolutely yeah i mean you 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 turned it around much quicker than i thought the process would would take um it usually takes a bit longer than that but you said you wanted it quick yeah. so i thought okay i'll yeah. work to a tight deadline yeah here. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and it was it, it, it's it's just a it's just a great book it's a lot of fun before we we wrap this up and i tell you about if you're watching this how you can get the book for free um you're also a glue a blues guitar player yeah <laughs> who, who are your guitar who, who are your guitar heroes oh um I'm very much. I, I play a tenor guitar. I don't know if you've ever come across. I've heard. Tenor I've, do you know what? I've only just discovered this recently. I've seen a couple on YouTube, yeah. and I'm not exactly sure what it is. I've got one. I'm not gonna, There's one hanging up on the wall here. That's a tenor guitar. Okay. It's got four, four strings. Right. So it's a bit. Yeah, you can see that four strings. Yeah. Four pegs there. Yeah. So it's. Uh, and what and what's it's, the tuning on them then? Is it just the is I, it the, I tune the mine Chicago tuning? So it's DGBE. So it's your four high strings normal. Right. So you're missing the E and the A string. Well, didn't um, Keith Richards used to take off the E anyway? So well, yeah, he yeah he, he played with five strings, didn't he? Uh, yeah. He used to drop drop his tuning, I think. But yeah. my main influence, I'm, I'm really into sort of um, pre-war blues, um, acoustic blues. Yeah. So Sun House. Um, right. Okay. Obviously a bit of Robert Johnson again, yeah. a bit sacrilegious because I know everyone defaults to Robert Johnson, but I'm not overly keen on Robert Johnson um, as know? a singer. Okay. Some of his songs are great. Um, yeah. I think um, Howling Wolf, the early stuff, Sunhouse, um, Elmore so, James. So Howling Wolf, the old Sun stuff, not the chest stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before we went up to Chicago, yeah, 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 yeah. And I like say it's um, James, yeah, yeah, Elmore James, um, Muddy Waters, obviously the early Muddy yes. Waters stuff, yeah, yeah, and um, wow. yeah, and I don't, I write a bit as well. I write, I write a few, I write some of my own blues stuff. You do, um, and yeah, you get out there and about, perform it too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've done a, a number of. Um, um sort of open mic things I've, I've done a couple of charity gigs on my own which was quite nerve-wracking it was only about <laughs> 200 people but it was just me on my own yeah um, me the guitar and a um i use one of these drum and bass combo sort of things uh pedals um, right okay yeah uh, and uh yeah, I enjoy that. So you're living to... the dream. You're doing what you love. Yeah. I mean, you know, you you've got you're an author, a, a published author, and you're a musician. You're doing it. It doesn't get much better than this, does it? It don't get much better. And a granddad as well. <laughs> and a granddad as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're having amazing. a whole, whole your life's having like a you you've got what do they call it a third act you uh, you've got going on there. Yeah. Okay, so the book is called The Pit. It's a terrific read, and now it's also, I think, a terrific audio book, but I would say that, but I enjoyed doing it anyway. And if you'd like to get the audio book for free, you can get it for free by signing up for a free 30-day trial of Audible. And that means you can get audio books for nothing, and you can get the first one for free. I mean, you get the... If you sign up for Audible you pay a monthly subscription obviously but right now there's a deal on where you can sign up for a month free and you get a book a month so you could always get the pit for free and at the end of the 30 day trial if it didn't work out for you and you just wanted to get the pit for nothing you can cancel that membership there is a link in the description if you want to join audible and uh, and get the pit for free uh, uh, download it for free uh, they'll send you a code that you can uh, you can download it and uh, it's a great read it was a privilege to be chosen by you andrew to to do the audio book and uh, hey, continued success with everything you do. It's uh, right. it's it's yeah. a wonderful book, and it's got everything. It's got it's got a mystery. It is suspense. It's almost a little bit horror, um, uh, especially when you talk about what really happened. I don't want to give too much away. What actually what actually happened all those years ago in the pit is uh, is quite a revelation when you find out about that. There is there is a ghost involved, but. Uh, but yeah, hey, thank you so much. It's great to finally meet you. Good to talk to you and continued you. success with the pit. Thank you very much.